As a material engineer, one of the most important data types that you're going to be using is a list. This is important, just think about what you gather in the lab. When you collect data, you're plotting it on the x and y axes. And let's say that you take that data from your lab and you now want to try and fit it to some sort of curve, right? And as you do this fitting operation, we know that we're going to have to be taking into account each and every one of these data points. And so we would really like a way that allows us to store x versus y where we can compare or you know access these data points in a systematic way and lists allow us to do that right um, there's other ways but we'll start with lists one of the challenges though I find is that people when you first learn about lists the way that they get indexed is really confusing so we said earlier that strings are a list of characters right the string is a word, right? But that's made up of a bunch of characters which have to be kept in a certain sequence, right? So here, imagine this word. The word Iron Man is made up of these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven letters. When we index them in Python, we do not start from one. I didn't make this rule up, so don't blame me. You start from zero, right? So I would be in the zero position, R, one, O, two, and so forth, right? You can also do this in reverse, but what's bonkers is when they go in reverse, they start with one. They go negative one instead of negative zero because what's a negative zero, right? So they start with negative one, okay? Uh, so this is how Python indexes numbers. Um, now we've talked before about slicing. Slicing is important because it allows you to access just certain portions of a, of a list, right? So here's how it works. If your variable name was variable, right? Um, you would put these square brackets and then you have a start index and a stop index, and you put the colon between those two. How it works, and this is very important, in Python, when you're slicing, you include the start index, you do not include the stop index. When you're performing a slice, you include the one at this position, you do not include that one. So from two to five, that would be taking the value starting at two, and going up but stopping before you get to five. So it would be these three blue letters. If you called for that, it would deliver you O, N, and M. Or if you said from negative six to negative two, again, it would go to the first position, negative six, that's R, include it, and it would go up into negative two, but it would not include negative two. So it would give you these four letters. So that is slicing and Python indexing of lists. Um, what else can we say? So lists are ordered, meaning the entries go in a specific order, but we can modify it, right? We can introduce something. So let's do some of this uh, in Python. Let's go ahead and pull up Spider and do some examples. I'm going to start by typing a list uh, for the Fellowship of the Rings. We're going to type out the members of the Fellowship. You need to use square brackets when doing a list. And you're going to separate the values with commas. By the way, if you run out of space, you can continue on to the next line. That's no big deal. Okay, that's all nine of them. So let's go ahead and start by defining this list. Okay, it knows that it's a list and it's provided all the names of them in this list. By the way, if you double click this, it pulls this up and you can see them, right? Now they've been indexed. You can see the index. It started with zero and it went up to eight, right? So nine in total if you include the zero, right? So there's lots of things that we can do to this list. We can sort it. There's a built-in method that allows us to sort things. So we're going to go fellowship and then we're going to type. And if you don't remember, you can tab over and here's all these different methods and functions that you can work with with this list. So you could reverse it, for example. Let's sort it first though. Oops. So we're going to do sort like so. And now you see that our list has now been alphabetically ordered. If these were numeric values, it would numerically sort them, right? That's one thing that we can do. All right, what else can we do with these? Um, you can add something new to the list, either plugging it in in the middle or adding it onto the end. Adding it on is the easiest. We use the append, right? So the append command we're going to use for that. So we're going to do append. And if there is a new member, I guess you could say Gollum sort of joins the party. So we will add him. Now our fellowship list has grown. It's the nine from before, and we added a golem, and it put it at the end of the list. Now we, spoiler alert, lose Boromir, so let's take out Boromir. So let's do that command. We're going to do fellowship.remove, and then we're going to remove Boromir. 
That's one way to do it. You can also remove it by telling it to remove one at a certain position, right? So let's try this one first. Now if we pull up here, our Boromir has been removed. Um, uh, we could also remove it by pulling out a certain position. So let's comment this out. And instead, let's try doing this. Boromir was at the, uh, previously, he was at position eight before we removed him. Another thing you can do, the same thing uh, could be accomplished by doing the pop command. We could pop position eight, All right? So I'm gonna comment this out. So first thing we'll do is let's uh, repopulate our fellowship as it was in the beginning. So F9 on that line, that's gonna put our line up here. Oh, we have to run this whole line. Since it was spread over two lines, it was confused by that. So let's just run this whole line, that whole section. Let's run that uh, with F9. Okay, so there's our fellowship. It has Boromir. Now let's try and remove that position. Okay. It removed it, but Golem was not added because we didn't run that line. Okay, so everything's working great. Um, what else can we do? Let's add one, let's insert something in the middle, okay? So let's try doing that. Let's try inserting Golem at the second position. So we'll comment this out. So instead of appending Golem, we're going to do insert Golem, and we're going to insert him at position two. Remember, that means actually the third one because we start at zero, one, two, so it's gonna be the third one. So let's try that. Okay, so we had our syntax wrong. So the number needs to come first and then the variable, then the, the item that we're gonna put into the list. So two, let's try that now. Okay, we pull this up and there we go. Gollum is now there. So lots of things you can do. Um, lists are not um, permanent. You can change them, okay? What else can we say about these things? Um, multiple identical entries are allowed. And we already said that you can add other things. Like for example, we could say, um, you could add uh, another data type to this, right? We could say like fellowship.append and we could add a number. Even though everything else has been a string so far, doesn't matter, we can still add it. If we come up here, we'll see that there's a now an integer type variable stored in this last item of our list. No big deal. You can do the length function and it will tell you the number of items in your list. This is helpful. So we could come down here and we can say, what is the length of fellowship? And when we run that, um, let's store that into a variable. Well, let's just actually drop this into our console, right? If we put that right into our console and run it, it will tell us that there are 11 items. And sure enough, if we count this thing, we would find that there are 11. It tells us, by the way, the size is 11, and that's starting from zero up to 10, therefore 11 items are in this list. And then you can concatenate multiple lists together, right? So let's say that you're doing uh, a grocery list, right? Grocery list one. Um, has the following items in it. Apples and then bananas. But then you are getting to the store and you realize that you have another grocery list that your wife prepared for you. And so you're like, oh shoot, we also need donuts and we need, and we also need hot chocolate. It's possible to combine these, right? So we can say that our new list is going to be equal to grocery list one. By the way, this auto completes those, which is really nice. If you hit down there, uh, tab, it will try and guess what your variable is. So we've got that. We can go ahead and run this. Now we're going to see that our new list, the grocery list, combines all of these things. It has both the apples, bananas, and the donuts, and the hot chocolate, and included them in the same order in which I combined them there. If we had switched the order here and done two plus one, what will it give us? Bet you I can already guess, it's just gonna reverse those. It's gonna do first donuts and hot chocolate and then apples and bananas, okay? So there's lots of other really useful methods that you can look into. We talked about append, uh, insert. There's extend, this will append elements from another list, right? So if you have two lists, you can extend them. Um, there's remove, which will remove a certain type. We already talked about that. Pop does the same thing. Um, you can clear a list by hitting clear, right? So we could do once you pick up those things at the grocery store, you could do um, new list and then you could type clear. And when you run this, this is just going to be an empty list, right? There's nothing in there, okay? What else can we do with lists? Um, there's copy, this is really important. 
Um, let's try, let's do an example here, right? So let's do this. Let's say that, um, uh, you know, third grocery list is equal to grocery list one. Okay, so we create a new variable that we're calling third list, and it's just the same as what we initially had. Now what happens if we go to our initial grocery list, grocery list one, and then we're going to remove uh, one of the items, right? You're gonna pop the bananas off at the one at position one. So now, oh, oops, grocery list, we need to spell that correctly, there we go, let's try that. So if we run that now, we have removed so take a look at that. We removed this list, the, the bananas from list one, but look what it also did. Our third list was equal to list one, so it, it actually removed it from both of those. So remember, this is a key thing about lists. If you change one um, and something else was being pointed to that, then you hadn't made a copy of that other one. If we wanted instead to keep a copy of our original list and call it third list, or we could say like copy of list one. What we need to do is we need to go to grocery list one and then use the copy command. That will create a copy. Now if we run this whole sequence, check it out. Um, now a copy of list one up here, you can see, retained its apples and bananas, even though grocery list one got rid of the bananas, right? So that's an important thing to recall with list is that when you uh, remember to make a copy if you need to preserve the original because just renaming it won't create a new one. It'll just point to the same object. Right? Um, and then you can count. You can count how many instances are in an element, and that's pretty easy. Uh, so we won't bother with that. Okay, so that is a primer on using lists in Python. We will do a lot more of these later. When we learn about how to do for loops, we'll learn how to go sequentially through a list and maybe take actions on the items that are present. But this is a primer for now on what lists are and how we use them.